exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey, folks, good evening and welcome to Phantoms of Monsters Radio. Thanks for joining me tonight. So um, first, I think it's going to be important to give you some background on the Jersey Devil phenomena. Um, You know, during an interview several years ago, I was asked my opinion of the Jersey Devil. And if and if I had received reports uh, related to the beast, then many of the reports I received were confidential. And I had received reports of other phenomena in the Pine Barrens of Southeast New Jersey. Now, <clears throat> there is a there seems to be a stigma attached to the Jersey Devil. People are wary of reporting this creature. You know, I'm not sure if the reluctance is because of fear of ridicule or if the legend has some ominous bearing to it. Anyway, I, I'll first try to offer a synops- synopsis of the legend and then add a few reports that I have received from the area. But before I go further, I want to state that this channel is made possible by you clicking and subscribing and uh, hitting the like button, and by you sharing our programming, uh, the super chat and super thanks donations are appreciated. You can click the dollar icon located below in the chat box, and the buy me a coffee link is also shown. So uh, thanks for your consideration. Now, I want to welcome all new members to the channel, as well as first timers in the chat. If you are listening to me for the first time, please like and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you're in the chat and you do have a question, please use all caps, and I'll try to get to each one after my presentation, and I'll let you know when I'm on the last account so you can start posting your questions. I don't want to miss anything. So, the Jersey Devil. So, according to legend, or the legend, a Mrs. Jane Leeds came from a poor family who uh, stretched out an existence in the Pine Barrens, a rugged place with vast forest, sandy soil, and uh, patches of swamp. So in 1735, Mrs. Leeds discovered that she was pregnant with her 13th child. She complained to her friends and relatives that the devil can take the next one, and he did. When the baby was born, he was simply described as a monster. He immediately took on a grotesque appearance and grew to more than 20 feet long with a reptilian body, a horse's head, bat wings, and a long forked tail. He thrashed about the Leeds home for a bit and then vanished up into the chimney. The creature, or the Jersey Devil, as it was dubbed, began haunting the Pine Barrens. Now, as that legend spread, even grown men declined to venture out at night. It was said that the beast carried off large dogs, geese, cats, small livestock, and even occasionally children. The uh, children were never seen again, but the animal remains were often found. The devil was also said to dry up the milk of cows by breathing on them and to kill off the fish in the streams, threatening the livelihood of the entire region. So in 1740, the frightened residents begged a local minster to uh, exorcise the creature, and the story stated that the exorcism would last 100 years. Well, however, the devil returned to the Pine Barrens on at least two occasions before the century was over. It is said that naval hero, hero Commodore Stephen Decanter visited the Hanover Iron Works in the Barrens in 1800 to test the plant's cannonballs. 
So one day at a firing on the firing range, he noticed a strange creature flying overhead. Taking aim, he fired at the monster, and while some say that his shot struck it, the devil co continued on its path. Now, the second sighting took place a few years later, and this time the devil was seen by another respected witness, Joseph Bonaparte, the former king of Spain and brother of Napoleon, who had leased a country house near border town from 1816 to 1839. He reported seeing the Jersey Devil while hunting one day in the Pine Barrens. Now, in uh, 1840, as the minster uh, warned, the uh, devil returned and brought terror to the region once again. It snatched sheep from the pens and preyed on children who lingered outside after sunset. Now, people across South Jersey locked their doors and hung a lantern on the doorstep, hoping to keep the creature away. Now, the stories continued to be told, and the lore of the devil was recalled throughout the 1800s, although actual sightings of the creature were very few. Then, in 1909, the Jersey Devil returned, and literally thousands of people spotted the monster or saw its footprints. It became so bad that schools closed and people refused to go outside. A police officer named James Sackville spotted the monster while walking his beaten one night. He was passing along a dark alley when a winged creature hopped on into the street and let out a horrific scream. Sackville fired his revolver at the beast, but it spread its wings and vanished in the air. Despite the sightings, the beast was always considered a regional legend until the bizarre flap of 1909, which even the most skeptical researchers admit contains authentic elements of the unexplained. Now, many people saw the creature during the month of January, including E.W. Minster, the postmaster of Bristol, Pennsylvania, which is just over the New Jersey border. He stated that he awoke around 2 in the morning and heard an eerie, almost supernatural sound coming from the direction of the Delaware River. He looked out the window and saw what looked to be a large crane <clears throat> that was flying diagonally and emitting a curious glow. The creature had a long neck that was thrust forward in flight, thin wings, long back legs, and shorter ones in the front. The creature let out a combination of a squawk and a whistle and then disappeared into the darkness. On January 19, 1909, Mr. and Mrs. Nelson Evans were awakened in the early morning by the sound of a large animal on the roof of their shed. They described it as about three and a half feet high with the face like a collie and a head like a horse. It had a long neck, wings about two feet long, and its back legs were like most of those of a crane and had a horse and had horse's hooves. It walked on its back legs and held up two short front paw legs with paws on them. Now, one afternoon that same week, Mrs. J.H. White, was taking clothes off the line when she noticed a strange creature um, huddled in the corner of her yard. She screamed and fainted, and her husband rushed out the back door to find his wife on the ground and the devil close by, spurting flames. <clears throat> he chased the monster with a clothesline prop, and it leaped over the fence and vanished. A short time later, a, the creature struck again. This time, it attacked a dog belonging to Mrs. Mary Sorbinski in South Camden. When she heard the cry of her pet in the darkness, she dashed outside and drove the devil away with a broom. The creature fled, but not before tearing a chunk of flesh from the dog. Now, Mrs. Sorbinski carried her wounded pet inside and immediately called the police. Now, by the time the patrolman arrived, a crowd of more than 100 people were gathered at the house. The crowd was witness to the piercing screams that suddenly erupted from nearby. The police officers emptied their revolvers at the shadow that loomed against the night sky, but the devil escaped once again. Eyewitness accounts of the devil filled the newspapers as well as photos and reports of cloven footprints that had been found in yards, woods, and parking lots. The Philadelphia Zoo offered $10,000 reward for the capture of the devil, but there were no takers. Then as suddenly as it came, the devil vanished again. 
Preacher did not return until 1927. A cab driver was changing a tire one night while headed for Salem. He had just finished when his car began shaking violently. He looked up to see a giant, gigantic winged figure pounding on the roof of his car. The driver, leaving his jack and flat tire behind, jumped into the car and quickly drove away. He reported the encounter to the Salem police. Now, in August of 1930, Barry Pickers at Leeds Point in May's Landing reported seeing the devil, crashing through the fields and devouring blueberries and cranberries. It was reported again two weeks later to the north, and then it disappeared again. In November 1951, a group of children were allegedly cornered by the devil in the Dewport Clubhouse in Gibbstown. The creature bounded away without hurting anyone, but Reports claimed that it was spotted by dozens of witnesses before finally vanishing once again. The sightings continued here and there for years and then peaked once more in 1960 with blood-curdling cries terror terrorized a group of people near May May's Landing. State officials tried to calm the nervous residents, but no explanation could be found for the weird sounds. Policemen nailed signs and posters everywhere stating that the Jersey Devil was a hoax, but curiosity seekers flooded into the area anyway. Harry Hunt, who owned the Hunt Brothers Circus, offered $100,000 for the capture of the beast, hoping to add it to the sideshow attractions, but the monster was never snared. Now, the most recent sightings of the creature was said to have been in 1993 when a forest ranger named John Irwin was driving along Mullica River in southern uh, New Jersey. He was startled to find the road ahead of him blocked by the Jersey Devil. He described it as being about six foot tall with horns and matted black fur. Could this have been the reported Jersey Devil or some other creature altogether? Irwin stated that he and the creature stared at one another for several minutes before the monster finally turned and ran into the forest. Now, the lack of proof of the monster's existence in these modern times leads many to believe the devil is nothing more than a creation of New Jersey folklore. If it was merely a myth, then how do we explain the sightings of this creature in the witness accounts from reliable persons like businessmen, police officers, even public officials? They are not easy to dismiss as hearsay or the result of heavy drinking. Could the Jersey devil have been real after all? And if so, is it still out there in the remote regions of the Pine Barrens, just waiting to be found? Well, that being said, I have had several reports over the years, and uh, some pretty um, upright people had come forward. So, uh, anyway, now I do want to state, state this. Um, before the whole Mrs. Leeds incident was supposedly occurred in uh, the 1730s, there was a rash of sightings of something very similar to the Jersey Devil in the eastern shore of Maryland. And, uh, in fact, the reports actually started in the late 1600s, and there were sightings from, uh, from Maryland, eastern shore, up into Delaware, and eventually, all these sightings started in the 1730s in New Jersey. So was it the same creature? I don't know. Uh, you know, the whole Leeds legend, you know, it's a legend. So, you know, you take it for what it's worth. Was there some truth to it? Who knows? But um, I, I did want to talk about the nexus of the whole phenomena. So... <clears throat> A uh, New Jersey eyewitness contacted me regarding a sighting of a pterodactyl-like winged cryptid that he observed flying above the wooded area near the infamous Pine Barrens. Now, I received the following information from an eyewitness. Could it be the Jersey Devil? He states, hey, I stumbled upon your site because I have been searching for what just saw like two hours and have had no luck. I live in South Jersey in somewhat wooded area, a very calm and normal small town. Anyway, today in the car on the way to the store, I was looking at the sky. It was about seven to eight at night, and I saw this strange thing in the sky. It had huge wings like a bat. It was like a dark brown color. 
There were no feathers at all. The body was black with short or no hair. It had a very slim body and a small tail. The thing, of, the thing about this bat creature was its size. It was bigger than a hawk. And in my town, we always see hawks, so I'm used to seeing them. I'm also used to seeing bats. This creature flaps its wings slowly, but the bats here are usually flap their wings fast. That's a strange part for me. I couldn't, I could have sworn it was a pterodactyl. No one believes me. I just need to know what the hell I saw. Please help. So, um, I contacted a witness for more specific information and I did receive this from him. Thanks for responding. Now I live in Voorhees, North New Jersey, 15 minutes from Cherry Hill, not too far from the Pine Barrens. Isn't that where the new, the Jersey devil is? And from what I heard, the Jersey Devil has who's, and this creature didn't have any. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, this thing flew low, and I didn't get to see its face. I know its wings had no feathers or anything. It flew as fast speed, even though its wings were flapping slowly. That's all the details I can get from seeing before it flew away. So what did he see? So um, I, later I got a... Um, a South Jersey police officer recounts his in encounter with what he believes may have been the Jersey devil during the summer of 2017. His girlfriend also witnessed the creature. Now he states, so this took place in the summer of 2017. I was driving in Southern New Jersey in Cumberland County. I was out with my girlfriend at the time. They always went on explorations and adventures together. Now, in typical New Jersey fashion, we just drove around aimlessly near the Pine Barrens, which is a large area of pine forest that takes up a lot of South Jersey. We would always joke about trying to find the Jersey Devil, which was the mythological creature of New Jersey folklore. Basically, you just drove around pointing out shadows and trying to scare your girlfriend. Anyway, as we were driving along at probably 2 a.m., we had a large section of forest surrounding us on a lonely road. We were the only cars for miles, but there were a few houses here and there. As we drove, I remember seeing movement to the right of the vehicle. From the front, illuminated by the headlights, but to the right of the car. As I drove by, there was a creature standing at about four to five foot in height. It seemed to be covered in brown hair, almost like a goat's. It had black wings that appeared to be leathery or smooth. I did not see a head, face, or anything else distinguishable. As we approached maybe a distance of 10 to 20 yards, the creature flapped its wings a few times and took off vertically. Not at an angle like a plane or a bird would take off. It then disappeared as we drove past. The whole incident took maybe five to seven seconds. I almost discounted as an hallucination due by the lack of sleep or something, but my girlfriend interrupted my thought process by saying, did you see that? Without hesitation, we pulled over and bailed out of the car with the flashlight. There was nothing. We looked and listened for a few minutes, but couldn't find anything. Then we started to Google all the wildlife in New Jersey to see if we could find what we saw, but no animal appeared close to what we observed. I don't know what we saw that evening. I will make no assumptions. I just saw a creature that I could not identify in the short time that it was observed. Now, I'm a lawman in, in South Jersey, and I have seen some strange and crazy things in my times on the street, but this is the creepiest. I have never seen anything like it since, but lots of other people in New Jersey have reported similar sightings. So in this next account, a group of friends were spending the weekend in the Pine Barrens camping and riding dirt bikes. The campsite was set up in a clearing. The uh, eyewitness uh, believes that he may have seen and heard, of, and heard of the Jersey Devil. He states, I wanted to be as detailed as possible. I live about 15 to 20 minutes from the infamous Leeds Point birthplace of the Jersey Devil. Now, growing up, we were often out in the pines, paintballing, riding dirt bikes, exploring old abandoned houses and mudding. We grew up in the, the Jersey Devil lore, very present in our life. My sister was 12 years old. Excuse me. My sister was 12 years older than me 
and her husband, a new boyfriend at the time, took us out to Leeds Point. We would find old rundown houses and say that it was the old Leeds house to spook us and things like that. Now, we never took it for more than a local legend. Now, as we got older, we became more fascinated, even tracked down the original house through the locals. The house is just an old crumbling foundation at this point. Now, my buddies and I had been camping or riding in a while, so we just, excuse me, my buddies and I hadn't been camping or riding in a while, so we decided we would do a two-day trip, a ride, and all-day camp out and party all night for the weekend. I had just finished restoring a dirt bike and that I had found in my brother's basement. So we drove out there and found a clearing that was quite odd. I heard about strange phenomena involving cleared circles that don't grow plants. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that I heard about them being def- referred as the devil's cramping ground, where, de- where demons would frequent. That seemed like an I- ideal spot to set up camp, as I was none the wiser at the time. We set up and rode all day and partied all night. Nothing strange occurred that first night. We woke up in the morning and it was overcast. The whole vibe of the day was off. They were calling for rain at night, but we were determined to get out this last summer camping trip, you know, get this off. So we decided to stay. There was a large patch of gravel at one end of the camp. It was getting tamped down as we were constantly in and out of the camp for drinks and gas over the two days. Now, the second night, we, were, we all went to sleep around 12 to 12.30 a.m. Around 3 a.m., I woke up and had to relieve myself badly, so I went out of my tent, went over to the edge of the camp opposite the gravel patch. Now, as I did my business, everything got quiet. Mind you, this is the summertime in New Jersey. The crickets, toads, and even birds around that time are usually singing away. I thought it odd, but figured maybe I spooked them stumbling through the darkness. I started to get this uneasy feeling of dread like someone was watching me and started to hear what sounds like hooves clopping on the gravel patch. It was so dark, but the moon was bright so I could make out silhouettes and saw something on the other end of the camp by the gravel entrance. I thought a deer wandered into our camp, but thought that unlikely because Jersey deer are, are scared to death of humans. I think it realized I noticed it and shifted its head to the side almost with a puzzled look when it did the when it did the moonlight hit its eyes revealing it to be glowing red and beady. My self-preservation instinct kicked in and I inched my way over to my tent thinking if I moved slowly enough it wouldn't be able to tell if I was moving until I stepped on a beer can. Then the can crushing sound startled whatever was standing there. I heard the clap of hooves and what to me sounded like an enormous bird takeoff. I sat up the rest of the night petrified. Now, it began to rain about 5 a.m. I went over to look for tracks, but the sunlight, but by sunlight, the area was washed out. I never told my friends, but they wouldn't believe me anyway. <clears throat> now, in this next account, a group of friends who had all lived in South Jersey uh, were... Uh, exploring the the infamous Pine Barrens in hope of finding evidence of the Jersey Devil. But they did experience an unexplained sight. My states, I have lived in southern New Jersey all my life, and naturally I've heard all the stories about the Jersey Devil. Now, I haven't believed all of them, but I do believe that the Jersey Devil or something cryptid is out there. So in the summer of 2006, some friends of mine and I took a ride to the Pine Barrens, about a 30-minute drive. We weren't looking for anything, but we're hoping to see something along the lines of proof of the existence of the Jersey Devil. And we were on Bulltown Road near Batstow Village, where we had heard of a lot of sightings and some strange things going on around there. Now, as we were driving, we passed by an old abandoned house and thought nothing of it. But after a while of not seeing much aside from deer and occasional owl, we decided to turn around. As we went by the old church, we saw what appeared to be bright green eyes peering out of the window. Armed with just flashlights, we began to drive up to the house, but then the eyes disappeared. Next, 
a noise caught the attention of me and my friend who was in the front seat with me. She shone her flashlight in time for us to see something swoop over the car. Now, by the time we could react to it, nothing was around. We went outside to investigate, but all that could be found were hoof prints in the sandy soil. The prints were too big to be deer and too small to be a horse. As far as what swooped over the car, it was dark in color, but was large, larger than a bird that I, any bird that I know of. Now, this next account, we have two accounts, actually, of similar flying humanoids seen by different witnesses at different locations in southern New Jersey. And the description was a familiar one, reminding me of the witness of the Jeepers Creepers film character, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Now, these reports were submitted in July 2015. Was this flying humanoid seen at two different times by different people? Well, you'd be the judge. The first account, <clears throat> I came across your site looking for answers to what my daughter and I saw in the sky, and there are similar stories to ours. Now, I'm from New, uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and approximately two years ago to this day, my daughter and I were riding our bikes. It was bright that night due to a full moon. Not too many clouds in the sky, but a few that would occasionally make the, the night darker. <clears throat> now, we stopped by a friend's house. Her and her two daughters came out, and we were just all talking. I happened to look up in the sky, and there's this flying, long, human-shaped thing with a wingspan approximately seven to eight foot wide. It reminded me of the movie Jeepers Creepers. My mouth just kind of open and I was speechless and pointed as to went as to it as it went behind the cloud near the moon. I told them what I had just witnessed. Everyone started giggling and I, I told them that it had not come out of the cloud yet to keep looking. Well to our eyes it appeared again. My daughter just stood there watching it, repeating to herself, Mom, what is that? I know she had that same hard to swallow feeling I did while my friend's two daughters ran inside screaming. We watched as it flapped and soared near the moon till it disappeared into the clouds again and never came back out. Now, I know what I had seen that night, but wouldn't know what to call it except a flying human-like creature, an experience that would never, I would never take back, and when I hear others, I really want to believe they have seen the same thing I had. Now, my daughter, to this day, and she's now 14, feels there's so much out there that we really just don't know about. What is myth and what is real? A night we will never forget and keep herself busy researching the Jersey Devil to Mothman to Slenderman. It's out there. So right after that, I received the following information response to uh, the previous account. After I posted it, I got, I got, another, um, got another letter. <clears throat> Lon. I live approximately one hour outside of Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and while on my way to my now wife's home to visit as the sun was just going down, my best friend at the time was driving as we were all going to hang out. I was listening to music and looking out the passenger side window, just enjoying the woodlands as I like to do often. As we approached an opening on the side of the road for the power line towers, I see a lanky humanoid looking creature with huge black wings flying up into the clearing. Now, the event, sh the event shocked both, of us, both myself and my best friend at the time, who was driving so much that we decided to turn around and try to get an even better look at it. By the time we had returned to that spot, however, there was no sight of it. He and I have never really spoken about this with anyone for fear of ridicule, but the instant I saw this on your site, I felt I needed to give that mother and daughter a piece of my mind. They aren't crazy, and I know what I had seen. I have lived in the woods of New Jersey almost my entire life and have seen almost all the natural wildlife that occurs within it, and this was not one of them. Here is the Google map. Um, he gave me the Google, Google Mac uh, uh, coordinates. It was around Landis Avenue in Buena Vista Township in New Jersey. Now, the sun had just gone down, so there's still some light shining down in the area. Very bizarre creature, whatever it was. So this next account, uh, 
the uh, the witness states, I currently live in Southern Illinois, but was born and raised in New Jersey, the Pine Barrens. Growing up there, we had all heard the stories, the encounters with the Jersey Devil. And my grandma had a, an encounter along with my dad. Pretty much anyone who has ever lived here or lived there knows someone who had claimed to have seen this creature. Now, I even have a former boss who staged a prank to his friend that ended up getting reported as the Jersey Devil sighting back in 1970s. Now, he never told his friend it was all a prank, so I, I think it's still an official sighting on the books. Now, even after hearing all those stories growing up, I was never afraid to come across him. He was always portrayed as a shy, somewhat benign creature. He was never aggressive, and he was always visible enough for the person just to catch a glimpse of him. I always felt sorry for him in a way. He always seems to lead such a lonely existence. Anyhow, I spent my childhood years riding around on my four-wheel or in this territory with no more fear coming across the Jersey Devil than I would coming across a poorly concealed corpse dumped by the mob. Flash forward to my teen years. I'm working on a blueberry farm in Horton State Forest with my brother's girlfriend, Janice. Now, she didn't have a driver's license at the time, so I usually ended up driving her back and forth to work every day. Now, we usually worked well past dinner time, and this story took place in the early days of fall. Now, that evening, as I was dropping her off at her house, it was a few hours after sunset. The farm was worked on the farm we worked on was deep in the middle of nowhere, and the farm she lived on was even deeper in the middle of nowhere. To get to her house, we had to drive through some pretty thick forest on gravel roads with no streetlights. It would freak anyone out, I suppose, but I was used to driving through the dark woods, so I was never really anything that bothered me. I got Janice safely to her house, went inside and exchanged some pleasantries with her parents, and shortly made my way home. I was on the last stretch of the road before the main highway that would take me to the end of town. That's when I was overcome with the creepiest feeling. I can't describe it any other way than that it just felt like I was being watched. So, just like being a dumb dumb I am, I stopped the car. My doors were locked, and I had a big wrench under my seat. I knew how to swing it and make it hurt if I needed to. I'm still in Jersey after all. So I'm sitting there scanning the road ahead of me and I can't really see anything other than the 30 to 40 year old blueberry bushes on either side of the road. Now, if you let the blueberry bushes grow wild, they'll climb to a pretty astonishing height. With these tall bushes lying the road, I really couldn't see too far into the forest around me. And after looking for a few seconds, I popped back into the car and popped it back into gear. I slowly started pulling down the road again. That's when I noticed movement at the top of one of these tall bushes. Stopped the car again and immediately started staring in that direction. Now, once I focused my eyes, I could clearly see something very large crouching on the top of one of the blueberry bushes. I couldn't make out any detail as far as colors or facial and body detail, but it was something clearly silhouetted against the uh, bright starry night. What I could make out was something larger than a man with a head, a huge head sitting in the half crouched position, almost like it was ready to spring from, from its hind legs. I sat and stared at what seemed like an eternity. I was baffled how something that big could sit on top of a blueberry bush like that. Now, as I said before, these bushes were old and tall, but not very sturdy. They grew almost like Gar uh, garden hedge, so anything could possibly be sitting on top of them without breaking the branches and tearing the bushes all to heck. In my concentration at staring at whatever was in the bushes, I accidentally let my foot slip from the clutch and my car stalled the engine. Such a stupid move. I can honestly tell you I came very close to almost pooping myself right there and then. This is the wrong, this was the wrong move. Right there in any horror movie, you don't let your car die in the middle of the woods while some creature is stalking you. Anyway, I think the sound of my car startled it because this thing's head whipped around to stare right at me. 
just as it took off in one swift motion and was gone from my sight. But I heard a loud whooshing sound like large wings that like large wings could make. In addition to hearing this, I could make out some very powerful looking legs that were bent at the knees like a horse's legs would be. It used them and they assumed the wings on its back to disappear from my sight in a second. Now, since the car was now stalled and quiet, I could hear a loud screech and whoosh of air above me that grew fainter within seconds. Whatever this thing was, it was fast and was powerful. I know I weirdly kept talking about these blueberry bushes, but I swear they are important to the story. As this creature was taking off from me, these bushes almost bent in half as it jumped off them, and I sat there watching them thrash and sway for quite a few moments after the creature was gone. Now, whatever was up there was skilled enough to sit on there without breaking the branches, but powerful enough to get them crashing around like crazy once it leaped off. I freaked the hell out, got the car started, threw it back into gear, and swung around the road, heading back to the safety of Janice's house, all within moments of this thing screeching away from me. I must have looked like a crazy person. When I showed back up at their house, I drove over the railroad ties in their driveway, left my driver's side door open, and just barged into the people's house. I started babbling to Janice's father about what I had just seen, and he calmly told me, well, you just must have seen the Jersey Devil. Now, he drove me back to the spot where I'd seen it, and it confirmed there was a disturbance in the bushes on the side of the road. Now, he told me that he had had quite a few sightings of the Jersey Devil on his land before he had, he had never sent any to his wife or his daughters so they wouldn't be freaked out. I let the cat out of the bag on it, but he really didn't seem to mind. I think he was happy to have someone else bolster his own sightings on the land. Now, I've never officially reported this sighting to date, but it, it did earn me a bit of a badge of courage among the locals for being dumb enough to stop and, and stare at this creature in the dark woods all by myself. Now, that was the last account. I'm sorry I didn't say anything about it. Um, if you've got questions, please put them up there, and uh, I will see if I can answer them. I want to thank Robo1776 uh, for your Donation, very much appreciated. Any questions, folks? Now, I, I will tell you, I have been to the, the Pine Barrens many times uh, over the years, um, starting back in the <clears throat> back in the early nineties. Quite frankly. Uh, I have probably been on, I've been on several investigations. This thing, I've never seen anything, but I, I, I have seen a few strange things out there. Uh, for folks who don't know the area, it is very, very thick woods. A lot of things going on. Uh, Disteratum. Could this creature be a pan like deity, maybe summoned by local conjure folks? I guess it's very possible. Um, uh, I mean, if you believe that sort of thing, uh, was a summon conjured or whatever, possibly, uh, I don't know what it is, you know, you know, is it more legend than actual cryptid or I don't know. Like I said, I, I can only go what people have told me and, and what I have not seen because I haven't seen a thing out there. In fact, I had never really seen any evidence other than a couple of casts that were supposedly made of the hoof prints of this thing. Uh, Can't squatch. Is there only one Jersey devil? Well, that we don't know. Uh, we don't know that. Um, you know, if, if it is only one, it's either lived a long time or there's another one out there so they can breed. So I don't know what, what the deal is with that. Uh, Vincent, uh, do you think the Jersey devil could be a tulpa? It's possible. You know, when you get all these stories and legends coming out about something like this, uh, the human mind could actually manifest something. So um, I guess it's absolutely possible. Uh, Disteratum. Has anyone tried to communicate with it? Not that I know of. Uh, I know pe some people have reported it being very close to their homes, uh, 
Um, but as far as communications, I really don't know that. Uh, race fan, Lon, have there been any recent sightings? Uh, yeah, there have been. Uh, now, I don't know how, what you consider recent, but as far as the past year, I, I think I may have had a few sightings, n nothing really exciting. Uh, but of course, like most of the sightings we get with this thing, people just don't really know what they're looking at. So I, I don't know, you know, but I, yeah, I do get a sighting every once in a while. Uh, B3 airspace line. Have you seen it? And do you think it might be a pterodactyl? I have not seen it. I, I think there's some evidence. It could be a pterosaur if that's the case. Now, you know, the, the two sightings of what these people stated look like hum flying humanoids. And the Jeepers Creepers comparison, you know, is this something very similar to what we've seen in Chicago and, and nationwide from other sightings? I could be, you know, we've had these sightings here in Pennsylvania as well. So, um, now I will say one thing we have, I have received several reports of dragons or dragon like creatures and huge flying reptiles in New Jersey. Not necessarily down South New Jersey. They're mostly up further north or in Central Jersey, but uh, there have been reports. So I don't, I don't know what people are seeing. Are they seeing baby dragons? Maybe I don't know. Uh, Demas Mars, what do you think the Jersey Devil could be? Well, that's just it. You know, I have no idea what. You know, is it something? Is it is it pterosaur? Is it something that people just have not identified? You know, I, I have seen a lot of renditions of this thing. It, you know, many times, the, you know, the classical uh, rendition is of the horse's head and the the wings, the um, bat-like wings with a long body, long legs, horse's legs, hocked legs with a hoof, and then paws on the on the arms. Uh, some people say that it can be biped on occasion. So, um, but no, we, we really don't know what it could be. Bear Ziffo, what is the most likely to be myth or cryptid? Well, just like anything else. I mean, you, it's a lot of it's myth. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but of course, you know, you've got something like that, a legend or a myth that's been going on for well over 300 years or close to 300 years. And, um, you know, there's going to be uh, there's going to be some renditions of it, but people seeing something and it's automatically saying, "Well, it's the Jersey Devil." Uh, could there be something else out there? Absolutely, something that nobody knows what's out there. Uh, Bear Ziffa, is this the creature that leaves hook hoof prints? And if so, is there a demonic bi biblical connection? Um, yeah, it does leave footprints that's what people have seen like i said i've seen the cast um demonic biblical connection i can't answer that you know i i don't really buy into the demon thing but um you know is it is this something from hell like i put in put in the description now uh, that's just kind of uh that's just kind of my interpretation i don't know what it is uh but uh it, it does it does seem to it does seem to get some really weird responses from people who say they saw something and that's the first thing they turn to. Um, I wish we knew more and maybe we, one day we will, you know, there've been, there have been investigations. I've seen several on TV of, uh, them possibly seeing these things in, um, in, uh, infrared or such. And they having the, um, the horse head look to it. Or sometimes a deer head look, um, but honestly, there has been no verification of that. There's no real proof. I haven't seen any physical evidence. Uh, so, like most cryptids, there's very little physical evidence at all. Scott Baker, does double eye color change of how hungry it is? I have no idea. I have no idea on that one. I haven't seen a devil and I don't know of any devil's eye changing. So, uh, you know, if you believe that sort of thing, then fine. But honestly, I can't answer that. Uh, Android paranormal. Do you think 
the the Jersey Devil and the Mothman could be mixed up by witnesses from a distance. I think it's possible. You know, I, I you know I had my encounter with winged humanoids, so I believe they exist. And of course, with all what's been going on in Chicago and other sightings we've had nationwide, I, I think there is something out there. It's possibly interdimensional. Uh, could the Jersey Devil be an interdimensional winged being? Absolutely. Uh, it's just something we know nothing about. Um, Maybe one day somebody will really take a serious look into this phenomena. Uh, you know, the Pine Barrens is a really huge area. There's a lot of state parks in there. Uh, that area, and there's two state parks just north of Pine Barrens where there have been a lot of Bigfoot activity, too. Uh, so, um, you know, cryptids are not unusual in New Jersey. So, um, who knows? Uh, Cans Quatch, uh, since Jersey Devil goes back to the 1700s, any ties to European legends from the settlers in New Jersey? Well, the, the original settlers in New Jersey were of Dutch origin. So uh, now, Mrs. Leeds, that's, a, that's an English name. So I, I, I don't know. Of course, there were English that moved in there when the colonies were formed. But like I said, the original, the original settlers were, were uh, Dutch. So um, I don't know. I don't know of any uh, stories, uh, you know, as opposed to like, but, you know, settlers are people who immigrated here from the old world and saw cryptic canines, werewolves and such. I don't know of anything uh, other than maybe, I don't know, I don't know, vampire lore or something like that would be connected to it. I don't know. I, I don't know any specific. Maybe somebody can dig that up for me. Uh, Bear Ziffa, how recent and numerous are sightings? Ah, they're kind of sporadic. Um, <clears throat> I don't get them very often. I probably get one, maybe two in a season, you know, uh, maybe four or five a year. Most of them are very brief. Uh, there's not a whole lot of detail. The ones I did talk about tonight, I had to dig these up because they, they offered more detail than most. But it, it's, it's something that I normally don't get uh, a lot of reports on. Um, Michael Angel Escalante, is that a picture of the Jersey Devil behind you? No. Uh, that's the Mothman. I've got several Mothman prints now. The one up here, that that one right there, that is the um, uh, the Van Meter visitor from Iowa. I, I I guess that I guess the description of that thing would be very similar to what um, people are seeing in New Jersey now. A lot of us believe that the Van Meter visitor in Iowa was actually a pterosaur. And I believe it was. I, I, I believe, you know, the book, uh, Chad Lewis wrote the book, uh, The Van Meter Visitor. And uh, that thing was around for, for a couple of years. In fact, they, they believe it was actually living in a cave outside of town. Uh, and they think there were at least two of them. So, um, yeah, maybe you want to read the book or, or search it on Google. Uh, maybe you come up with some ideas of, you know, is it similar to what people are seeing in New Jersey or supposedly seeing in New Jersey? Uh, Beat three airspace. Lon, you, are there any military bases in the area? Absolutely. There are actually two of them. Uh, Fort Dix is nearby. And there's another, there's another air station not far from there, just south of there, where, um, and I don't know what the name of it. I guess it's probably the joint with Fort Dix. Now, Fort Dix has had a history of some weird things itself, especially aliens. Uh, if, you, uh, if you search Fort Dix, uh, D-I-X, and aliens, uh, you're going to see a story come up because it, it's pretty well-known encounter. So, uh, yeah, that South Jersey doesn't... Uh, is not deplete of uh, strange happenings. Uh, 
once Scott Baker's Jersey devil, a meat eater or vegetarian. I have no idea, but I, many times I've heard a lot of things about the blueberries and the, and the cranberries, these things eating. Um, I think it's probably more vegetarian than anything else. But then again, you know, with the legend, it's something about attacking livestock and killing pets and such. So maybe there is something to that. I, I just don't know. Okay. Well, folks, I want to thank you for coming in tonight. Lots of good questions. Um, thanks to each and all of you for watching and chatting. And if you donate, it's truly appreciated. Uh, again, your support's what makes all this possible. Please like, subscribe, and share. Now, if you have a sighting or an encounter report that you'd like to be considered for this show or for the Fams and Monsters blog, feel free to contact me at Lon Strickler, famsandmonsters.com. So until we meet again, have a safe weekend. I'll get something out next week. Don't know what it's going to be, but if you have suggestions, um, send me an email. Go on Facebook. Send me a text. Let me know what you want to talk about or want me to talk about, and we'll, uh, we'll do what we can. So uh, until we see you again next week, take care and have a safe, enjoyable weekend. Good night.